she is Chitabia uh, in English from Cornell. And she won two Whitcomb Poetry Prizes there, judged by Gerald Stern and James Galvin. Um, she's an alumna of the Iowa Writers Workshop, um, Irish Writing Program in Dublin. And her poetry has appeared in um, Big City Lit, Love Lotus, Buffalo Carp, and the Portland Review. And she lives in Exciting to be here. Thanks to Stephen and others at Smartish Pace for organizing the event, KGB for hosting it, for all of you for staying. Um, I'll start with the poem that was in Smartish Pace Dublin. People caution Dublin has changed, which is another way of saying I'm afraid to forget who I was. Whether Dublin changed or not, Dublin would change. Eye doctors are never out of work. <laughs> Perhaps we can know where we are, but not how fast we're going. If Dublin is not nostalgic for our hand-me-down selves, why can't we take the ravens with the sold signs? The smell of seas perpetual, the watercolor skies. Exactly the right things are immutable. And sometimes change is immutable, and it's circling back. The young proprietress considering whether to buy new glass jars to display the scones is as old and charmed as the gone bookstalls on Bachelor's Walk and Aston's Key, as old and charmed as the glass Naven ghosts and the day years ago when we met. I also, it's, it's a pleasure to read with the three poets who have preceded me, so thanks to them. If you see something, say something. The polystyrene box of what appears to be yellow rice is in fact a suspicious package, <laughs> lurking as it is just down the steps at a major subway hub, nowhere near a takeout joint, and should be reported. Someone, for being blue or broken, may have left their harmonica's capillary fuse inside. Someone may have exclaimed with joy, the reasons have not been codified and forgotten to cover his mouth. Or the ants, they could be leaving messages for the crazy woman near the turnstiles. Four score and twenty minutes ago, the queen left the building. Or how many light bulbs does it take to screw in a picnic? Or nodding knowingly, look out, fellow for Miss Day. There's something fishy in the way they take off their heads and carry them home. Brink. I really like saying that word. I'm going to say it again. Brink. <laughs> Plastic bags shiver along the street in the ecstasy of the moon's first chill. Leaves again have feet and billboards their lonely bravura. Here is the driving with no driver and diaphanous clouds, almost another word for tattered. The brink has always been the best resort, complete with edges of palms, flutes, and what was your name again? Everything in black and white, of course. Not for simplicity, but to keep us guessing at which field is really wheat, which river coming back to say what it meant to say all along. Blood might just be shadows here, that ringing a banquet for ghosts. This poem is a little reflection on the changes that have been happening in my corner of, of Brooklyn, and perhaps throughout Brooklyn and, and this city all the time. Lots of empty lots. Uh, it's called Earth Mover. You are symmetrical as the best gods and golden. Komatsu, tell me what the future feels like. I dreamed the ruts were furrowed pages and fragments of the vanished walls spelled prayers. May the new hotel's windows reflect dusk headlights and recall the fiery brawn that shaped the chandeliers. May candy bar wrappers kids drop by the condos be as offerings to the factory ghosts. 
Komatsu, I bring you whatever is burnt. Diesel, thunder, a lost shoe for a new road. Tell me what the future sounds like. Your cradle claw, your symmetry, the warning that comes too soon. I dreamed the morning found north side pitted and each was waiting to forget. The earth around the pits was ruled as if for planting. I also want to give a quick shout out to Alex Fong who has been a, a workshop sort of fellow of mine and has helped make my words better. Thank you. Um, so I debated whether or not to, to read this one. I think I'm going to do it because I was waiting for a villanelle and none of the other poets had one. So if they had, I, I would have definitely ditched mine, but we'll give it a spin. It's called These Selves. In ones and twos carrying instruments, they arrive at a place in the park where sunlight favoring nothing so much as the leaves dapples the ground. Watching, one woman in a wheelchair talks to a man angry about the state of the world. While we map the world of tomorrow, train schedules, instruments of worry, and I think about the kind of man whose harmonica catches the sunlight and the woman who mouths the words before she leaves for her group home and leaves something quiet in the park. The world looks back to find a young woman years ago, a song with no instruments or voice, and the way the sunlight caught her hair. On the corner, a man selling malteds becomes the man who moved west, palms for leaves and weather pond to endless sunlight. Listen closely. The world is not made of instruments, but of the hollows within. The woman thinking about the woman who can be still. The man carrying joy like the sound of instruments waking up. These leaves will crisp and fall. The world will lose its sunlight like a rabbit's foot. But the sunlight sings today. A woman taps her foot to forget the world and remember it too. A man sways gently the way leaves and breezes do. And ragtag instruments remind the world. Right now, sunlight, instruments a woman and man in the park beneath countless leaves. Me and the poet. This is a true story. I told the poet whose poems I loved that I loved his poems, and that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> I should have said flapjacks, or lilies of the valley, or failing these made the sound of eyes opening. I should have said nothing and memorized the warp of linen at his elbow or worked out the math ratio of his lingering to the length of the night or turned cartwheels, cried a little, told the one joke I know. What is this, some kind of joke? But I told him I loved his poems and so learned again the lesson I never seemed to learn enough. Something about slant or the ocean its synaptic shores, the cursed boats, and never letting on you prefer sleep. I'll tell you who the poet was if you ask me afterwards. <laughs> I still love his poems. <laughs> Earthquake. In theory, anything that redistributes Earth's mass will change Earth's rotation. That's a quote. Smoked paper is a lovely thing to imagine, as if you could hold the sheet just so in the flames, and it not burn, but catch the spiral scent like filigree catching light on silver cups. Where our heartbeats spike and subside, a line on smoked paper is best straight, or is best so from our perspective, in cities and ships already bent like anchors and foretelling. Someone left their shoes here, pointed down, a new symbol for the loss rising imperceptibly in our throats. No longer the backward boots and stirrups, no longer horses, their galloping also registered on the scrolls, but too small to read. Eight. 
airlift. If you pay online, you plant a tree. Boot to spade, clean cut, lever. A whole angle does a box of windows. Worms tracing tiny cisterns, ribs breathing their last, a subtle change in the landscape. Like listening for trains in a wine glass. If you text these numbers, you fix the child's unformed mouth. Scalpel to lip, clean cut. The suit of air trumps the suit of water. Stitching, each pass undoing a code. Empty abdomens, candles gone soft in the sober light. Portraits in museums watching like headstones. Hollering does no good. If you sign the petition, you close the prison. A whole sharp is a broken piano. Birds dreaming at the bottom of the sea. Everyone turned to cottonwood seeds. Everyone tuning their teeth for the jamboree. Pandemic. Nearly all the hotels in Washington are off limits. And I imagine the same can be said of the ones up here in the underground capital of the nation. They say, beware of bedbugs, and you start to imagine them nights when sleep is hard enough. Six legs, carapace of blood. Typing clean hotels returns cleanhotels.com, red herring. It's on a quest to keep us from watching people having sex on TVs in our rooms. National Geographic, meanwhile, is marveling at sex on TVs in our rooms, along with larval flounders, the hunt, Death Valley, and a star in the constellation Monasteros, whose bright body once shed light echoes equal to 600,000 suns and made a halo of radiance and dust. Two left. Dear Alexander, Midnight in New York is another name for sunset in Point Reyes, where my uncle loved to be. I'm still awake and doing whatever it takes to keep from sitting down. I get this from my mother. From her mother, on one hand she's acquired radio silence, on the other, a distaste for garlic, which her mother, of course, loved. Like magnets, who knows which way will go. My mother's brother was named like an archangel and dove like his father. He said, okie dokie pokey, loved green balloons, and died in Fort Lauderdale. My mother loves crows and words in neat ink on a page. Also the thin man in tank top and shorts, on ice bed and waves, with a little boy named Alexander who must be grown up. Version of the future. We bore shells of all kinds into the distance. First avocado, pistachio, turtle, then sea, and finally our empty hands cupped. These were the least sturdy, the warmest, and we tried to pour a fragile steam from our mouths like broth to a warmed bowl, but fragility prevailed. It was too quiet for speaking. When we arrived, we scooped salt water for hours. We forgot why we had come. The only sign that we were still who we once were before vanishing points, our laughter was bigger than any vessel you could name. Was your holding your ear to my palms and saying you could almost hear the city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel and Matthew and Joseph and Joy. And thank you also to the Smartish Pace folks that are here tonight, Deb and Brian and Claire and all the Smartish Pace kids that are not here. Thank you on the internet next week.
we'll be watching it next week. And most importantly, thank you to KGB for having us again. We'll hope to be here again next year. And the best way to thank them is to now buy a lot of liquor. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you.